Two. G'day everybody, how are you going? Well, today I'm launching something new. I think a lot of people that watch this channel are image makers. We like to create images. Now, of course, there's all different types of images. There's big images, small images, dark images, light images. There are still images and there are moving images. And that's where I kind of felt that there was a natural synergy for us to have what I'm gonna be calling from this day forth, Movie Monday. Movie Monday. So Movie Monday is about the celebration of films. I'm not exactly critiquing them. I'm just gonna explore them and I'm gonna talk about what I love about them, what gets me excited about them. The pictures, the music, the story, the emotion. There's no set rules here. It's about passion, enjoyment, love, excitement of the art of filmmaking. So of course, as always, I really wanna know what you think about this film. What makes you excited about it? Or why don't you like it? I'd be so keen to hear all of those things. We're gonna have a great chat about these films that we love so much. And I want this to be fun, you know? I wanna have a good time. Maybe there'll be the odd impersonation or silly voice, silly hat. And of course, I've got one of my favorite red jackets on. Appropriate for seeing a fine film at the theater. Now, you may have heard this before or you may not, but actually photography was my, the, the second thing I was most passionate about and filmmaking was the number one thing. And all through my photography career, the last 30 years, I've been making films, some years more than others. In the last couple of years, uh, YouTube, I've made more films than I've ever made. There's uh, over 150 on my channel. It's amazing to think that I've made that many already. So it's logical that people who like creating still images, probably a large percentage of us also love moving images. There's a natural synergy and a natural segue over to having Movie Monday. Now there is one film that I have cited more than any other film as being a massive influence in my life. And this is 1982's Ridley Scott's Blade Runner. I was 11 years old when I saw Blade Runner with absolutely no idea what the rest of my life was going to look like. I didn't even know I was going to be a photographer or a filmmaker. Absolutely not. I was 11. I would have been in grade 6. I'd hardly really got my first camera. I think I probably got my first little 110 format film camera maybe around that time or a year later. No idea of what the future held, but this film was seminal in influencing the cinematic way that I saw the world. And of course, Ridley Scott has made an immense amount of beautiful films over the years, including, of course, one of the biggest that I suppose really launched his career, which was Alien. Then came Blade Runner. And of course, he's made other amazing, there's, some, there's countless films, whether it's Black Hawk Down, they just go on and on the amazing Ridley Scott films. And some might not think of Gladiator as a Ridley Scott film, but it is as well. It's, it's a Russell Crowe film, but it's also a Ridley Scott film. He's very prolific, of course, he brought us Prometheus, which was the follow-up to Alien. After all those years of other people making Alien films, uh, he finally brought us that one hmm, to mixed reviews. But today is not about Alien. Today is about Ridley Scott's Blade Runner. So let's dive into Blade Runner for Movie Monday episode number one, the inaugural one, probably the most influential film in my world, Blade Runner. That at the time, its box office was not very successful. And as an 11 year old, I did not feel the same way about it. I thought it was an amazing film. I love science fiction. I'm a big Doctor Who fan. It looked beautiful. The Vangelis soundtrack was amazing. Harrison Ford did a great job. Of course, he was already a hero in our lives as Han Solo. Also, he'd been in Indiana Jones in 1981 and Raiders of the Lost Ark the year before. 
Could it get any better than this? Han Solo, Indiana Jones, in a science fiction film about robots that look like humans, but you don't really know who's who. Brilliant. Brilliant. But the critical reaction was not necessarily the same. And I don't really understand why. Let's break it down. So, great cast, great soundtrack, Ridley Scott's astonishing imagery. For the time, exceptional special effects, flying cars. How could you go wrong? You just simply couldn't. But what Ridley Scott did is he created a vibe. He created a world. He created the world as it would be seen in the future. Not that far in the future for 1982. And strangely, the world of Blade Runner was set in 2019. It doesn't quite look like that. We don't have flying cars yet, but they're working on it. And we don't have replicants yet, but they're working on it. But this was the not too distant future, looking amazing. And I have to say, they got it probably half right. Now, Blade Runner was supposedly based on the Japanese city of Osaka, the noises, the sounds, the look. And in 2009, I traveled to Osaka and Tokyo, and indeed, I could see a great deal of the influence of the film Blade Runner as I walked through that city. An amazing place, a beautiful place. I loved it. I was only there for about six hours, I think. Uh, but it did show me where Ridley Scott got his influences from. From a photographic perspective, because that's, of course, our main interest, all of us on this channel, it was simply a stunning film. He photographed at night. He photographed in the rain. And, of course, these are two things that I have continued to love. I just simply love the way the world looks when it's wet and there's all that extra atmosphere and texture and all those extra lighting opportunities that comes when it's raining. I also like to shoot in the fog as well for the same reasons. The light is very, very different. Well, not for the same reason, for the reason that the light is very, very different to the majority of the time. I don't think there was really any fog in uh, Blade Runner. So this film was absolutely gloriously shot I thought it had a great story. I'm, I don't really understand why it bombed. And uh, what's strange is that it went on to have numerous recuts. I've lost count. It's somewhere between five and ten. And I actually, if you, if you look up here, you can see there. This is my Blade Runner box set, which came in the same. It looks like the case that uh, a piece of equipment came in. And that has something like five or six versions of the film there in that very case, uh, all on DVD. So that's how much of a fan I, I am. I spent a couple of hundred bucks on that. And that's a limited edition. Uh, I've got 3,546 of 4,400 versions of that they made. I'm not sure if that's for the world or just Australia. But at the time of that coming out, which was probably around about 10 years ago, in there is supposed to be the final Ridley Scott director's cut without the narration with the unicorn at the end. For those who know, you know what I'm talking about. And I suggest if you haven't seen this film and you like photography, you should check it out. So really in this, I want to share the impact of this film on me. It's not a review. Like I said, it's not a review. This film as an 11 year old washed over me with its beautiful music, its beautiful imagery, its beautiful lighting, its great acting, very poignant acting. Uh, Harrison Ford was very well cast and he fit in playing the sort of hapless, I'm not really sure what's going on, uh, Blade Runner chasing the replicants down who were more powerful and more deadly than him. I think it has a very poignant and famous ending with the speech by Roy talking about the fact that his candle burned twice as bright but it only burned half as long. In other words, he was saying, I've lived an amazing life. It's okay that I'm dying now. Because the thing is the replicants have a use by date built into them. And all the replicants wanted to know whether one, they could turn that off and two, when was their use by date? So it's just such a great idea, of course, written by Philip K. Dick, the science fiction author who's written a few different pieces that we love. 
Yeah, so the, the look of this film and the thoughts behind this film, the ideas behind this film really resonated with my 11-year-old brain and uh, I did love it oh so very much. So I'd like to thank you so much for watching. Of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And please, uh, of course, subscribe if you want to be part of Movie Mondays and where we just chew the fat on films. Please like, please share, and I look forward to seeing you next time. And of course, tell me what you think about Blade Runner. I'd love to know whether you like it or not. And tell me what films would you like to see next. Thanks so much. I'll see you next time. Bye for now. You could see what I've seen. I've seen what I've seen. More human than human is our motto. What if I go north? Disappear. Would you come after me?